As of May 16th, the United States leads the world in COVID-19 deaths at 90,113. This video will look at the spread of COVID-19 in the United States alone. One month ago, Dr. Phil claimed 360,000 people drowned in swimming pools a year, when the true value was 100 times lower. At the same time, many Americans are comparing COVID-19 to influenza, the flu, which happens every year without commotion. Without taking sides, let's look at data of the deaths in the United States caused by influenza and COVID-19, provided by Worldometer and the CDC. The CDC considers each flu season to start at the beginning of October, so that's where we'll start our line graphs. Okay, I want to get this video online quickly, so I'll only show one graph this time. I do plan on doing more in-depth videos in the future. I also want to say, I chose to measure death counts instead of case counts because the number of cases depends so heavily on how much testing is done. And this is true for both diseases. Many people with the flu never show up in this statistic. With deaths, it's just more absolute. Also, for this video, I used the COVID-19 death counts that were known at the time of the date, not deaths that were discovered retroactively, which is why I'm not including that February 6th death that was discovered in April. This is because that's also the same way Worldometers, which is my source, records deaths for COVID-19 in the United States. Also, comparing death counts between the flu and COVID-19 is kind of like comparing apples to oranges, because flu death counts are wide-range estimates that come at the end of the year, which means they're trying to account for unreported flu deaths in a ballpark, but not precise way. On the other hand, COVID-19 deaths so far are a precise, but not ballpark, count, so they're not accurate, because it only includes people actually diagnosed with the disease, and not those who died in their homes unreported. A ballpark estimate like the flu death count might not be known for months or years to come. Still, despite this discrepancy, I thought an apples to oranges comparison like this one is still better than no comparison at all. I also want to describe how I got the daily stats for the flu deaths per season. Of course, links to sources in the description. So on the page Disease Burden of Influenza, the CDC reports ballpark estimates for flu deaths each season. The worst modern season being 2017-18, to 18, 
with 61,000 deaths, and that's the number reported most in the news. However, the CDC also has this website called the Pneumonia and Influenza Mortality Surveillance from the National Center for Health Statistics Mortality Surveillance System, which reports weekly deaths as they come in. These weekly counts are precise, but there's a problem. If we look at the website's reported influenza deaths and add them up for a season, we get totals much lower than the ballpark estimates on the Disease Burden of Influenza page. For example, in 2017, we get 15,620 instead of the 61,000 everyone's familiar with. There's another category for pneumonia deaths, which are 3 to 20 times higher depending on the time of the year, but these could come from other causes, so I couldn't quite use that stat. So to arrive at the 61,000 count, which is more accurate but less precise, I scaled all of the 2017 to 18 weekly data by the ratio it was off by. In this case, 61,000 divided by 15,620, which is 3.9 times higher. The real life meaning of this is that only one of every 3.9 influenza deaths in the US actually gets reported as an individual death right here and now, and the rest go uncounted, but we try to account for them in the general sum. The benefit of doing all this is that at the end of the whole year, the counts for each season line up exactly with the numbers on the Disease Burden of Influenza page. We can also now see the general picture that COVID-19 has killed about 1.5 times as many people as the 2017 to 18 flu season, the worst one, but in around two months time. Maybe you think we should apply the same multiply by 3.9 times rule that I described for the flu earlier. I could, but that seems disingenuous because we really don't know the ratio for COVID-19. It's definitely getting more press coverage, so that would encourage more concerned people to get tested, which would improve the ratio, but COVID-19 tests are also much newer technology and in much scarcer supply, so that would worsen the ratio. In the end, it's hard to say. But if any of you viewers have ideas or recommendations on better ways to compare, let me know in the comments. In other news, growth has been roughly linear for the past month, which is better than exponentially increasing. But it's only slowing down ever so slightly. Given that info, is it a good thing that 48 of the United States are planning to open up in some form or another this weekend? Well, this video is only supposed to display the data we've got so far, and not recommend policy, so I really can't say for sure. Anyway, thanks for watching this video that shows a single line graph and a bit of rambling, and I'll see you all later!